And indeed, Ghana is quiet naturally, and it's just. But again, it could be saved. You never know. Exactly right. So it's still not in. This. It's still 4 3 Ghana's way. They have to finish it. My word. Huh. This is not a game you want to bring your grandma or grandpa to unless they have a passion for this game. That's the blood pressure of some people that are actually going high. I might say myself here, yeah, but uh, all the same, I need to put myself together. And I am indeed. Again, the coach, she's on the field arguing with the referee. What's going on? A little card issue there to the coach. <laughs> Expectedly. Goodness me. And there we have either Jeffrey to take it and uh, we'll say that he's been good for his side so far we just saw this coming didn't you yeah look they, they've been getting on top of uh, Ghana the whole game so especially this second half and it's we could get an extra 30 minutes of this which is will be fantastic because it's been a great game so far what do you think Ghanaian fans will be saying to themselves uh, were they robbed from this one or were they just uh, something just happened that they just can't explain I think the second half South Sudan just came out firing and they a Ghana team just couldn't keep up. They couldn't run as much as the South Sudanese, and that was the difference. Um, wow. This still not over. Indeed. It all matters who takes it. And I'm sure whoever takes it right now is the most nervous player on the pitch. But they just need to put themselves together. And I can see two players there fighting over who needs to take it. Robert is there. Shang Deng is there. But I have a feeling that uh, it could be taken by either Jeffrey or if they're still... I'm not sure whether they have Nord Deng on the pitch. I think he went out. Sorry. Yeah, only chi chimes on his brother. But uh, whoever's taking it, waiting this long, they're going to be very <laughs> nervous. Absolutely. If I was a penalty taker, I'd want to take it pretty quickly, not <laughs> wait this long. Of course. He's uh, what dreams are made of. It's between life and death, you say. You need to really have the mentality for this one. I can see a few of the Congolese in the crowds in the uh, <laughs> South Sudanese section. That's how it should be, I'm sure. It's uh, all about encouraging unity, oneness, and celebrating the African heritage. That's what the African Cup New South Wales brings to you. A bit of an interesting embrace there from David Ajasu and uh, Maliet who has been really, really deadly for his side. I did see this coming, that South Sudan is a team that can come back from... There you go, the coach has been sent off. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Ghana is quiet, and rightfully so, because their fans were really, really, really reeling them on for this one. It's just... A tight call. And the goalkeeper hasn't moved since he's gone down, so this will be interesting. Whether he's wasting a bit of time or he's actually hurt. It's quite interesting to tell whether that's the case. But I'm sure if he stays on, it could have been more time wasted. Right, the Ghanaian coach has been booed there by the South Sudanese fans. He's smiling about it. Is that he, he got red carded. Uh, it's, uh, it's all about the spirit of the game. But, uh, that's against the rules of the game. You just can't go into the pitch like that. He goes, he's, hugging, he's hugging one of the South Sudanese supporters. So wow, that's good all to happy. see. <laughs> this is a grand final indeed that we were expecting. How do you think the atmosphere might be if uh, Sudan misses this one? <laughs> It'll be tough. It's It'll be tough on the player that misses too. <laughs> it's a big responsibility. Looks like uh, Jeffrey's going to take it. And uh, Jeffrey, I'm sure, is the player that will be taking this one. Uh, it's very rare after you see a substitute takes penalty that means they must have confidence in him 
usually they just go for the players who are on the pitch, who have been on the pitch all throughout. Players like Tiep Tiep, Chang Deng, and so because so far it's hard to really falter any of the Sudanese players because they're equally as good one to the other and the only blunder you might say has been from the goalkeeper again you might not say it's his fault entirely due to the nature of the weather and these things happen outfield players make make, make mistakes all the time and absolutely goalkeepers are entitled to make mistakes as well uh, there's a high chance that this that, definitely there's a high chance that this will be a goal because i mean if the keeper is in pain and tries to save a penalty he might be restricted with his movements, you might say. And the worst thing that could happen is the player who is on the ball to place the ball wide. We've seen players like Kevin De Bruyne doing that, which kind of actually shocked people. That was about three weeks ago. Right, so every player can have their moments, but this is not a moment you want to let go to waste. We could be in here for extra time or we could just see the end of the match if Sudan misses this one and Ghana will be crowned winners of 2020 African Cup New South Wales and that is if this one goes outside but as it stands Jeffrey against Daniel Sadaka and referee Afam is calling this penalty about to be taken to make it 4-4 here, Jeffrey and Daniel. It's taking its 4 4. South Sudan are in this, and they are in this, showing themselves to be the team to beat indeed. And they have met their, their, their names count here. What a play, what a climax, and what a moment for North Africans here on the pitch. It's 4 4 in the African Cup New South Wales Grand Final. A goal score there on the penalty box by Jeffrey. A lot of love there. A few of the players going up, uh, look like hugging their parents on the sideline here for South Sudan. Clearly means a lot to them. It's called David Ajasu on the ball for South Sudan. Uh, so, sorry, it's for Ghana. And here's uh, Freddie Ajasu to. Ofori, Ofori to his number nine. Joshua finds his player. It could be a goal here. Defended well. My word. Well done. What a block there from the player. Heavily hit. Ajasu is there. Lobbed in nicely by Ajasu to find Freddy. But Robert is there. Good play there from the defender. Almost a goal there from Ghana. It's fantastic work there from Ghana. South Sudan may be still celebrating. Is that David Ajas is on the ground. Uh, back to his feet. Goodness me, this is getting intense. And we have less than five minutes to go, I'm sure. It's a match. It's worthy of a grand final indeed. Taking long to the goal scorer of the penalty. Foul there from Freddy. Jeffrey takes makes it long towards his player. Malet is there. He has options to his left hand side. It could be a goal here by Mubarak. Unlucky. Unlucky there from Sunday, rather. Good play there from South Sudan. Love how the switch plays so quickly. And they almost went ahead there 5-4. It's and, 4 4 here. And again, South Sudan getting in behind Ghana's uh, right back and left back. It's, it's happening again and again and again, and they still haven't been able to solve the problem, Ghana. So. Wow. I mean, stories like this are always, always, always hard to end in a way that uh, you see the side who always keeps going ahead, and uh, the opponent keeps crawling back into the game, tells you that something will happen. And what has happened is what we were expecting and what we've seen. But again, Ghana is trying to make something out of this one. Tiep Tiep is on the ball. Joshua is there. Abraham makes a long pass towards uh, Mubarak. Yeah. Mubarak gets the ball. 
sorry, Sunday gets the ball. He has um, Thea behind him. He has um, Malik behind him. But uh, Kevin Ofori is there. Loves the ball into play. Falls nicely for Abraham. Perry is there for Ghana. Robert is there. Nice play from Robert. He's fouled. And the referee calls it. It's it. The end of the game today. Right now. But again, we see this one ending 4 4 in the 90 minutes. And referee will definitely take us into extra time. And we're here for an exciting and thrilling match ahead of us in this extra time. Ghanaian players are all distraught right now and thinking to themselves, how did they let that chance slip from their hands? And I'm sure they're not going to be happy with themselves or maybe they go keep it. But again, it's a teamwork. Yeah, whatever was said at half time by the South Sudanese coach really worked because a very different side to the first half and they've absolutely dominated against Ghana in the second half. Um, and if it continues, then I can't see uh, Ghana winning this game, to be honest. So we'll see what happens now. Indeed, it's a hard one to call. I really uh, buy in what you're saying, indeed, um, Alex. But again, I've seen players like David Ajasu change games. And uh, if anything, it'll be him that, could need, that needs to step up for his side. As, uh, he's a player that has fantastic delivery. And a good delivery from David could change this game for his side. But again, South Sudan, as we say, they have the endurance, they have the pace. And they're causing more havoc for Ghana. And so far, we've seen things have really turned upside down here. Ghana were ahead 4-2. And South Sudan came 4-3. And almost in the dying minutes of the game, won a penalty to make it 4-4. So a good comeback here from South Sudan, who has been deemed the team to beat. And again, I think they're living up to that, Billy. And look, and if they do end up winning after a game like this, then there's no better way to win than to come back. Absolutely. Come back is always better than, I think there's a phrase for that, but I'm not sure where I can get it from in my head, but uh, comebacks are beautiful, I'm sure. And I'm sure if they come out victorious here, they will be the ones uh, going home really excited. But again, it's the game. There, always, there has to be one winner, and uh, today is either between South Sudan or Ghana. I'm sure the extra time will go for 10 minutes each for both halves. So the referee is, might be calling this one soon. We saw the lights and the, we're into darkness and back the lights are on. It's not a bad sign. Sometimes we need to say let there be light. You can see the body language from both benches at the moment. South Sudanese players all embraced in a huddle and uh, Looks like uh, the Ghana bench is uh, they look uh, all very upset at the moment. So, very important body language, how both camps are feeling. And that, that plays an important factor in football. And, you know, if you get a, a positive environment, then that is going to be the difference in a grand final. Absolutely. Well, it's a good point you made there, right there, Alex. Your body language tells a lot about uh, your emotions. And I'm sure if you have a positive emotions, you might come out uh, with. Uh, Good strategies to ensure that you make things happen well for yourself. Good embrace there from the south side in this side. Of course, you can see the tight knit there and uh, Ghana slightly disjointed, but uh, nonetheless, I'm sure the message will still be getting across to them. They must be telling themselves, asking themselves, how did they let that slip from their hands? But Sudan, as we see there, are very, very much of a one family and they are inspiring, inspiring each other to make this grand final worthwhile for them. We've come a long way, a team that has gone unbeaten in this tournament and I'm sure that uh, that could be the end of their tale to go unbeaten all throughout this tournament and win this grand final. And if I was a player in that team, I'll be saying to myself, I cannot play against a team or I cannot let a team who, and I believe I'm much stronger than, <laughs> take me down because uh, if Cape Verde could beat um, Ghana and Ghana and Cape Verde was beaten by South Sudan 5-1, should give you more confidence to play well. And I'm sure they've really thought about that and uh, used that as an advantage for themselves. 
to come out really well in this one. What do you see in the next 10 minutes or 20 minutes in total in this extra time? Well, if Sudan keep playing the way they are and Ghana don't lift, then I can't see anybody else but South Sudan winning this, to be honest. So hopefully uh, Ghana do pick up the game and we get a very uh, even 20 minutes. Anything you want to say about uh, the goalkeeper for uh, South Sudan? Because I'm sure he's been a f bit of a, a weak link a little bit from this side. Well, he'd be a happy man right now, that's for sure. Uh, good. He'd be happy that his uh, team managed to come back from that. And hopefully win it. For his sake. Indeed. So it's extra time. First 10 minutes to go in this extra time. And uh, the next one again will be another 10 minutes. But uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be something that players and fans are looking forward to. But most likely, South Sudan feel like the most inspired team on the pitch. Definitely, yeah. They'd be uh, coming back from 4-2 uh, down. They'd definitely be very inspired to do well. And uh, if, I guess, Ghana won a... Basically, the coach from Ghana had to be very positive there. So he had to sell the idea that there's no better way than winning a grand final than doing it in extra time. Absolutely. So the players are down. Very important that he is positive in terms of getting the mentality right because they have the quality. It's just getting their heads in the right frame of mind after letting a two-goal lead slip. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's what that that's what needs to happen. Is it's quite difficult to pick a player up when uh, they're down emotionally, but doing that will really make uh, things work out for them well. And I'm sure that uh, that's what their coaches were telling them out there in terms of inspiring them to play well in this one. There's a foul there, and that referee Afam is... David's not too happy. I'm sure it's all about emotions now and how it's going to be managed. It comes down to the player's mentality. Nice delivery there from David, who always makes good deliveries into the 18-yard box. But yeah, it's South Sudan on the attack, and it's uh, Maliet. But good defensive work there from Trenaboa. Taking quickly. Chang Deng. Maliet delivers nicely towards Jeffrey. Freddy towards Lord Daco. Good defensive work there from the South Sudanese player. Yeah, it's only 10 minutes for this first half of, of uh, extra time. Godfrey Baba defending right there in the heart. Ghanaian half. Yeah, a bit of a bad decision there from the captain to try and beat him one-on-one -on -one in their own half. Probably not the best choice. Just Indeed. keep it simple and I guess play it to a team that's free instead of trying to take on someone that's bigger than you, quicker than you. It's all about playing clever players now, otherwise any slip will be hard to recover. That's it, one mistake, that's all it takes. Here's Abraham. Finds Sunday. Sunday plays a good ball in for his player. Great save from the keeper there. Goodness me. Here again is Abraham to Chang Deng. Deng finds Maliet. Maliet makes the switch for his side. Good play from Maliet to Robert. Robert on the attack with Freddy, the guy who's got more pace in him. It's going to be a tight, tight one there for Robert to get out of, but uh, it's played. Risky ball there from Freddy. It's taking his time dealing with that one. <laughs> Those are balls that can actually catch a keeper, a keeper off guard. But nicely done. You can tell the entire field has gone quiet. And I'm sure that uh, any attempt towards goal right now, but the South Sudanese are still picking things up. And we know that uh, fans' inspiration is equally important. Trinaboa makes it long for his player, but he's headed towards goal side for Ghana. South Sudan on the attack here. They could make this one count. This is Jeffrey. In the TDI box, goes to ground, but referee says nothing doing. Ghana on the attack now. 
And again, South Sudan finding space between the centre backs and the wing backs, doing a lot of damage when uh, Ghana are basically spread out. Absolutely. Freddie. Again, Freddie, not num Freddie right there, it's a uh, different player, but South Sudan is on the attack. And they could make something happen here. Very fortunate. Godfrey. Almost. In a one-on-one -on -one position with a uh, uh, Ghanaian defender. Goodness. This could be a game that might likely go into penalties. And it might be even more riskier for a South Sudanese player who goalkeeper who has been struggling to catch the ball with his hands in that the ball is, the ball is slippery but again if anything needs to happen for either side it will be an extra time and there we see a player on the ground there on the goal side and it's been attended to by Some medical staff will see Latoa, a Ghana coach, alongside her colleague. Latoya, who has been managing the side for some time. And Ghana is the oldest team in this, one of the oldest teams in this competition. They've come a long way, and for them it's all about family, support, and embracing the game in general. As Lord Daco. side an opportunity to have a breather I think I think they need it at I the moment it's a, it's a clever 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 approach to things because uh, we know that these South Sudanese players they have it in them They've still got it in the tank and sometimes as a team if things aren't going well and the other team's playing well you just got to slow it down and hopefully try and get them out of the room absolutely and that's a good way for them to really make things roll out for them and Ball is in play. Fair play for Ghana. And uh, good response there from Daniel Sadaka. And he's on a yellow card for time Western earlier. Any other one could be a red card. But again, there's no time to waste. Robert with the ball for South Sudan to Tiep. Tiep finds Abraham. Abraham looks for his player. Referee says foul there on the young Sudanese who looks to be a player that could be just under 20. It's number 10. Farah Koko. Dangerous situation here for Ghana. Absolutely. Taken by Farah Koko. Nicely taken, but uh, on the head of David Ajasu towards his player who finds Freddy. Pardon, not Freddy. It's Joshua. Joshua cuts it in nicely for David Ajasu, but the ball falls to Perry. Perry plays it on nicely for David Ajasu. David makes it a bit longer for Freddie, but uh, Abraham is there. Has the ball outside for a throw for Ghana. Takes the pressure off Ghana a little bit by hitting it long. And Absolutely. I think so far David has been a standing player for his side. With all his delivery, has been so dangerous. There's more dangerous delivery here. It could be a penalty. Could almost a Almost. He went down. <laughs> Oh, it's a bit of a tough one. Uh, clashing together can be a bit tricky. You need to know how to position your body well, but uh, nicely done there from the South Sudanese player. And I think it was a smart move from the player not to have fallen as well. Otherwise, he'll have received the card for simulation. Or he could have made the referee's decision more harder. Someone's coming up. Prince, yeah, Prince, Prince coming off. So substitution there from Ghana. Uh, we were thinking actually Prince to have come off earlier, but uh, nonetheless, it's still a necessary change. And there's a, seem to be a vibrant and exciting player in Solomon Mensah. Here's Sunday. 
against Perry. Perry to his player. Back to Perry. Perry turns around, has David there, but it's a foul against. The player there, David Ajasu, delivers nice one towards Freddie. Seems like it was overhit, but Freddie's there nicely, trapping the ball down with his legs. Good delivery there to find right switch there. Solomon, the wise man. Sounds up for a throw. It'll be interesting to see uh, the difference the subs make because Ghana were lacking a bit of energy in the final third. So if that um, if they can use that energy to press and just put a bit more pressure on South Sudan when they do have the ball, it might be the difference in this game. Jeffrey showing his pace there against Lord Daco. Lord Daco. Jeffrey is there. Nice play there from the Slinners player. Just off the bar. Goodness me. Godfrey Baba could have put his side ahead there. But just over hit over the bar. And there we have the referee looking at the player on the, on the, on the ground. And that's uh, Trinaboa. He's been on the ground several times during this match, and I'm sure he may need to come off at some stage, or he might be kept on for his experience, you think? Yeah, well, obviously as a leader, you want him on the field, but he needs to be able to run as well. So we'll see how he goes. I'm, he sure, back up. I'm sure they're trying to push this one, but again, uh, you need to really read your player and uh, know what choice to make but again this is a grand final and you want to do whatever you can to ensure that your side is still in this one goodness mate this is a grand final that uh, most weren't expecting to go extra time but uh, here we are it's the first half of extra time and uh, we've played almost five minutes in that uh, first half five to go I'm sure a goal here will change this whole atmosphere for either side. There's Daniel to make it long for his side, but he goes short towards this player who makes it long. Freddy is there, but uh, good play from Atrul. Finds Jeffrey, dummies it. And it's over hit. It's a goal kick. It should be a goal kick. And that's a goal kick for sure. Good call there from a farm. Referee flawless. Yeah, doing really well, to be honest. Uh, some of the best refereeing I've seen in this tournament so far. Absolutely. In a, in a grand final, usually it's quite intense. But uh, yeah, it's well handled there from a farm. Goodness, it's uh, approaching the end of the first half in extra time as Perry makes it long towards Joshua before he's there. Solomon is there, Perry is there, Abraham, and it's the end of the first half in extra time and the referee Calls for no break, but switch inside immediately. And uh, we continue from there. It's 4-4 right here at the heart of Western Sydney Wanderers home ground. Where the grand final of the African Cup New South Wales between South Sudan and Ghana. Where North Africa meets West Africa. Clash of the Titans. And a lot more even in those 10 minutes. So I think the way this is going, it's going to go to penalties. <laughs> Very likely so, because I'm sure the players' energies are dropping. But uh, South Sudan has a little bit more in them by the looks of things. They're naturally built to run. And uh, if that could be used as, as an advantage, they need to really tap into that potential of theirs. Second half of extra time, where Farm gives us 10 minutes. And the players will look to use it wisely. Godfrey on the ball. Plays it home towards Thiep. Thiep makes it long. Nicely played there from Thiep to Sunday. 
great control as well there. Good first touch indeed from Sunday. Abraham loses the ball, but uh, Ghana's players there. Good slide tackle from Tiep Tiep. An all rounder. And uh, South Sudan is putting the pressure into this one. It's a foul, but play, referee says play on. Good play there by the slip from the player. He was looking for it was from the referee, but referee says play on. Yeah, definitely not a foul there. <laughs> so well done to the ref. There's South Sudan on the attack. This time is Jeffrey. Has options to his right hand side and behind him as well. He could go for a long shot, but uh, reads the play and says no. Good play from Joshua. Kevin Ofori to David Adjasu, Adjasu to Freddy. He loves to run Freddy, the man who pace, always has it, has it in him. He's been tackled there by Robert. Freddy's got the ball still. This could be an advantage for him. Good play there from uh, the Sydney's player. I think he's feeling that the referee gave a, 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 a corner kick, but uh, uh, naturally it was actually a goal kick, but the referee saw a corner kick, and that's what's going to land then the player taking this corner kick is David we know that he's a good deliverer of the ball and this could be very dangerous for South Sudan and every set piece for Ghana has been quite deadly so far corner kick taken nicely by David headed out wide nice play there from uh, Sudanese defender there's Jeffrey on the ball tries to beat his man nicely taking by Perry. Abraham with the ball. Makes it long for Sunday. Another ball in behind. Sunday gets it, but it's called offside. It could be a goal, but it's offside. It will not have counted. Uh, she actually put down her, her flag again. Yeah, she had her flag up and then to put it down. So uh, it's a bit of a confusion. And these are the things that can actually bring more tension into the game. I'm sure the referee is going to, going to consult her and see what uh, she has to say. Yeah, she's definitely put her flag up and then changed the mind five seconds later, so he might just be confirming. Yeah, it was offside, okay. It's a good call there again. I'm sure if there's no VAR, you can always talk things out, and that's uh, always happened there. Good communication there from, from the referee. Very well managed. Absolutely. It's a decision like that sometimes. Uh, can, Goes out of yeah, hand. Yeah, get the game out, <laughs> out of control. And it's in a good position for it to be taken by Daniel. Sadaka takes it long. Right into the 18 yard of uh, Ghana, of uh, South Sudan. It also been a handball, but the ref didn't see it. Make, it's made long. Godfrey is there, slips to the ground. Lord Dako is there. Freddy Jasu plays it to Freddy. Uh, Freddy's got Robert here. What can he do? Cuts it inside nicely. Takes a shot towards goal. It could be a goal. It's a goal. What's a goal there from Freddy? My word. That is what you need from Ghana. And they have done it. Right here. Goodness me. A goal to behold. A goal that could kill. South Sudan, and you can see how it's turned this whole place upside down. My word. Goodness me. What a belt of a shot from Freddy Say. And you say his name is Freddy. Goodness me. And if that's the winner, what a great way to win the, the tournament. Absolutely. That was fantastic. My word. What will the ref do here? Give, uh, gives Freddy a card, but nonetheless... There's not much you can do about it. It's a goal worth celebrating. The spectators are loving it. And I think he just wanted to show his muscles, to be honest. There was a bit of flexing there. My goodness. Clearly hit the gym in the off-season. He has really. And it reminds me of the Wolverhampton player who came from Barcelona. Just can't recall his name. Yeah, Adama Trier. Trier, exactly. Same pace, same. But again, this has been a game where South Sudan always comes back from a goal from uh, Ghana. And I think that will happen. You never know. Let's see how this one pan out. Give him a new nickname, the Ghanaian Hulk. 
might actually suit him as well, but just with the heart, it's a different story. What a finish. What a play. Goodness me, Freddie Say. If this is it, and it's really it for them really well, they needed something like that to really make the fans go back to where they were earlier. My word. And again, it's come out of nothing. They haven't done much for the last you know, 10, 15 minutes. And just needed something special. And again, David Ajasa was onto that build-up, making the pass to Freddie. And this is what it's resu resulted into. A good goal there from the Ghanaian striker. Wonderful play. And you can see uh, the supporters are uh, loud again because they <laughs> went a bit quiet there. I tell you, I see this one ending in penalties, but again, we can't say that for now. Uh, it's going so well. But I think the goalkeeper could have done better there. I think so too, but <laughs> uh, let's just leave it there. <laughs> no. Wow. Well, praise the uh, praise the finisher there. Absolutely, I believe so. But again, good delivery there from the Sassanese player. It could be a goal. And most likely, almost, the uh, player was struck there by the ball. If only it had landed on his feet, it might have been a really good shot towards goal. Uh, enough time here. Might be six or so minutes left. Wow. South Sudan. Will be going out of this tournament, but uh, it's hit with power, but not with precision. They've had their chances to win this game, South Sudan, and just haven't taken it. Absolutely. And uh, Ghana took a chance out of nowhere, and it counted for them. And now the South Sudanese supporters are very quiet at the moment. Very quiet. <laughs> it is what the game is like. Freddy, Joshua, Bamboozle there. Again, here's the goal scorer who is always full of pace, but Robert is there. No way though. That was a foul against uh, Freddy, to be precise. But again, the referee called it against uh, Freddy for some reason. Anyways. South Sudan in possession. Back heel didn't work out well. Joshua the ball for Ghana. What can he do with the ball? Turns around nicely. Being tackled there by the player. And Farah, David Ajasu, who's been very pivotal in his side and could cause something yet to happen. And just wide. And he's complaining that uh, he's been pulled there, but the referee says nothing much doing there. South Sudan still in this game. And have so much faith in themselves and it could happen what do you think if South Sudan comes back from this one it could and definitely be here again well it'd be very surprising to see that's for sure but they definitely have the quality so we'll see there's only a few minutes left well, I still feel like this game could go to penalties and uh, as I said these sides have scored eight goals in Round two of the matches. So scoring eight goals here is not an impossibility. But here's David Ajasu, who has been so good for his side. Keeps the ball, but loses the ball to Robert. And this could be a problem here for South Sudan. Robert needs options. David could take it from him. What can South Sudan do here? They could have a banger, but not quite. Still in possession. There's uh, Jeffrey. Could he dribble? Does it nicely towards goal. Sunday, Robert. Jeffrey is there. It's a foul. The and the Lions was waiting for her offside to happen and she called it right up. She was just waiting for uh, Jeffrey to touch the ball and lift the flags up. And she did that rightly. But again, I'm sure the referee might be having a word with her. Nonetheless. Jeffrey's been fantastic since he's come on. I'm surprised Absolutely. he didn't start, to be honest. He's, he's been great. Do you know, though, she actually put her flags up again. Then uh, makes you wonder whether the referee's going to talk to her, but no. 
was a so it's play both teams in the box goodness me Ghana could seal it here but South Sudan could make an equalizer again and they oh, did I told you so sorry I told you so I told you so what a game South Sudan are the team to beat what a game what a game it's 4-4 right here 5-0 rather not 4-4 it's a game of goals goals galore and we've seen it here what a way to make this count my goodness alex what are we seeing here well just look at the emotions look how much it means to them the fans are enjoying this they're loving it and you can see they're the staff they're trying to keep them off the field very hard when all these people are happy. Yes, yeah, sir. Quick, I couldn't even see the goal scorer. My yeah. goodness. I but it know. must have been uh, from the number 10. It was either the number 2 or T, one of the taller boys in the back post. My word. A goal, a game of goals. 10 goals so far. My word. <laughs> this is becoming what we expected of a grand final. South Sudan and Ghana. Giants missing the powerhouse in West Africa. Could this go to penalties? And I think so, very likely. And as I was saying, Alex, this could be a game where we see things ending in penalties and we are likely going to be in there. But again, stories like this end where the ones who always come back seal it at the end. Yeah, you called it. I didn't think they would come back from that one, to be honest. But uh, they have, so. Absolutely. Well done. We've seen this many times, even in our sleep. So it's no lie that uh, South Sudan actually made it count for them. But again, they are the side to beat in this competition for sure. And Ghana just can't seem to understand how Sudan keep coming back. Here, they are again on the attack. Jeffrey. What a bad loss there from the player. But good recovery there from... South Sudan, the referee looks at his time. A bit of a tension there from Joshua and Jeffrey. My word, what a final it has been. What a comeback. What a comeback for Not sure. Just once, twice, <laughs> three times. My goodness, this. It's a grand final indeed to really stand the test of time. There is South Sudan, but David Ajasu boots it out. But South Sudan is going for the win in this one. They don't want a penalty, you can tell. They're in the position to actually get something here, but uh, the ball is in play. Kevin Ofori makes it long. Chested there by Mamouche, who makes it long for. It's the end of this half. It's the end of the match. And Ghana are on the knees, praying and wondering how they let that slip. My goodness. 5 all and full-time match. And this takes us into penalties in the grand final in the African Cup, New South Wales. Alex, wow. How can you sum this one up for us? Well, just a game of uh, comebacks, I think. I think that's the story. And if South Sudan go on to win this, they've done incredibly well. And, you know, they won't forget a moment like this. Like I said before, there's no better way to win a, a final than coming from behind. And they would have done it coming back a few times. Goodness me. My word. Indeed, a game of comebacks as well. We see there Latoya consoling her player, David Ajasu, who I'm sure... It's a bit uh, disappointed that his side couldn't seal this win. But now it all lies in a game of chance, you would say, where penalties can go either way. But the way I see things, the South Sudan's goalkeeper has been a bit of a weak link. And uh, if he's not careful, he could be the one costing his side. Sorry. Uh, the grand final here. And I'm sure there's no time for him to be changed to somebody else. A chance for redemption <laughs> for the keeper. Indeed. What a game and penalties coming. Okay. Yes.
Yes, that's true. Thank you. Wow. This is too full on. I don't know, right? That's what it's good. Yeah, they are getting hell. Yeah, yeah. That's. I know, because I've been giving them some objections. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have seen one of the best grand finals in this tournament where South Sudan and Ghana finally made the statement that they were the teams who belong in this grand final but this game has been nothing short of a thriller this is not thriller in Manila it's thriller right here in the heart of Ruta Hills and uh, the gods of the hills are beckoning for something special here. This is where the 2020 chapter for both sides come to an end. One side, of course, becomes victorious in this one. And the other goes home with at least something consolable in second prize. The first kick of the ball is Thiep Thiep. And... Uh, 
Alex, you, you know Thea as a player. What do you think uh, he might be doing here with this first chance to put his side up in this penalty? He's definitely got the quality to vary this, so it's just up to the keeper. Um, he's a fantastic player. I coached him a few years ago when he was a bit younger. I uh, played centre back for me, to be honest, so a bit different to see him in midfield, but he's done a fantastic job today. And he's about to take it. And he takes it nicely. Bears it onto the left hand side of the goalkeeper. It's a good goal there from Thiep. Very good goal. Very well done. Calm. It's a good start for him. And uh, now the pressure's on Ghana. And I think. Uh, see the spotmanship right there from Thiep and uh, Freddie. Good one. Wishing him well. Even though I'm not sure he means that intentionally. <laughs> but uh, just have to do the pull out of things. My God, what a goal from Freddie. That would have been a wonderful way to seal the cup for the side, but again, Sassadin had different plans. It was definitely a great finish, and I thought it was over, but... What South if he misses Sudan this again. one, and he scored that? It's taken by Freddie, and oh. it could have missed it, but it's a good ball there. That was very close. My very word. Close. Wow. Keeper almost got a hand to it there. It's 1-1. One, one. One one uh, in the grand final, South Sudan and Ghana. There's uh, number ten in Fora, a uh, Fora Coco. It brings the cocoa. Will the ball bring the coffee? You never know. And let's see whether he might drink something hot this afternoon or this evening. He's against Daniel Sadaka. He makes it. It's a good goal. And there he goes with his hot beverage. Keepers dive the right way, but hit it well. Well done there by Farah Coco. And Kevin O'Furry, who is very solid in centre midfield. And uh, whose side also won the championship for his local club, Marayong. And here yeah, he has a chance to put his side and 2-2 two, two for Ghana and he does it nice and calmly how do you see this one ending um, Alex <laughs> hard to tell yeah very hard to tell the keepers they've come close to a save one each but um, at the moment they haven't gotten a hand to it so Absolutely. maybe it might be a player that misses the target completely that's what I was thinking exactly because uh, with the way the pitch is slippery might uh, play my likely slip and just place the ball wide over the bar or on the side. And here we have Sunday, sure. Sorry, not Sunday. Chang, who needs to put his side three here. Goes nicely and on target. Great finish. And here you see, you hear the South that is chanting. It's just uh, makes you feel like you're on a safari, but uh, I think we feel like we're in a safari in our own uh, gantry here, which feels like we're going into you know, seeing some, you know, wonderful, wonderful exposure to nature. And here we go, Ghana. Kusi Wama. Will he put it wide? And it makes it really good. Great finish. Great finish here. And I feel like this might be goals, goals, goals until all the players take it. And they might even encourage goalkeepers to take as well. Unless someone plays it wide. And they have Mamouche, the captain for South Sudan. And you can see a bit of energy there from Daniel trying to take charge of his goal post but uh, Mamush is there for South Sudan what can he do go right or left he goes to the right hand side of the keeper another goal there for South Sudan 4-3 very confident at the moment the South Sudan is. Solomon the wise man and 
uh, his name is very powerful, you say. Uh, the name Mensa is one of the most richest person in the world. And having the name Solomon as well makes him the wise man. So he's wise and rich. And can he deliver something good for his sight here? Or he might give it to the poor. I'm so Almost. Wow. That was so close. That was almost to be given to for charity, but uh, I think he played his part well there. Been a wise man to convert it. Jeffrey for South Sudan here. Jeffrey Lino. It's been very, very influential for his side. And he, he needs to convert this one. Changed the game when he came on, so that's what you need for some from substitutions. Substitutes. There to change the game, and I'm sure his goal here will even add more to that positive influence for his side. Jeffrey against Daniel. Will he go to the right or left? He takes it nicely, and it's going to the left inside of the goalkeeper. Very confident. It's five penalties so far from South Sudan, and this is it from David Ajasu. If he Miss this one. That's the end of it for them. But David has been very, very good so far, so you can't imagine him missing it. But again, no player is infallible. Here's David against Daniel. Two Ds. Which one comes out strong? Goodness me! Oh, that was <laughs> well, a little bit tricky. I didn't expect that from him. He normally goes to the top corner, so maybe he must have been told that uh, they yeah, know what he does. But that was risky, regardless of his quality. And there's a trill, a trill. And now this is a time where players were not quite confident for penalties. I called the pun. And it's five-five again. Five-five again. It's oh. <laughs> It's very ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Atrill and Daniel. ACDC. It's a good one, but uh, a bit of a powerhouse there. Belter of a shot right in the middle. Uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, you can see Atrill there is, is telling his goalkeeper what to do. Will that make a difference? And I'm sure if this doesn't go in, that's the end of the road for Ghana. I'm nervous on the sideline here. I can't imagine the players right now. <laughs> Penalties, not for everybody. And I'm sure... It's it! Oh, great Good goal there from the player. The no outfield word. players have all stepped up at the moment. It's up to the goalkeepers now. One of them. <laughs> has to step up, make the difference. Uh, this is the guy who needs to make it count, otherwise he may not be able to embrace his day, Sunday, which comes tomorrow. Uh, he might just stay in door. Ghana is playing this song. And uh, Sunday against Daniel. Here he is, taking nicely, and he belted over the bar. Wow. What a shocker! My word! And yeah, Ghana has a chance to make it count. Oh my goodness! Oh wow! He might be very, very distraught here. Will he be saved by the day? And if Ghana gets this one, that's the end of the road for South Sudan. And Ghana are in here to clinch the title for 2020. Joshua wins it for Ghana. What a way to end it. My goodness. Joshua Khan, the man of the hour. The man 
of the day for Gunner. My word, Gunner are the champions of the African Cup New South Wales 2020. What's a way to be crowned winners? They started so well and they finished it so well in a penalty shootout. A climax I was so, so tough to handle. But again, you will say they deserve this one because they were always ahead and Sudan, South Sudan keep coming back and officially Ghana took it for 2020 this year. What a game it has been. It's been a fantastic game and honestly penalties is a lottery so they shouldn't be too hard on themselves to South Sudanese boys and they are a young team and they're going to be winning the African Cup for many years to come so it's a, it's a good uh, thing to build upon for the next few years for them so well done to them. They should be very proud of themselves. Absolutely, Alex, as you say, it's a bit of a lottery there, penalties. Not uh, everyone can be quite certain about the outcome of penalties. But here we have it. South Sudan are out of this competition, but they have been the side to beat. And the only side that took them down was Ghana. Uh, where we see a West African powerhouse in Ghana making a statement in 2020 that they are the champions. What a historic win it has been for the very first time at the venue of one of the most prolific sides in the A-League, Western Sydney Wanderers. And this is a day I'm sure they'll behold and hold it so there. The first side to win the 2020 league on the ground that I'm sure they'll be using for years to come. A place they've been looking forward to having and a place they're going to embrace for some time. A good game from Ghana. A good game from South Sudan as well. But penalties are always hard and always tough. Wonderful finish. And wonderful play there from all the players throughout the tournament. And I'm sure fans are going to be going out to players, wishing them well. And we can see the South Sudanese players out there are uh, being consoled. But as you said, Alex, they shouldn't be hard on themselves with penalties. This is a game of chance and a game of, a game of lottery. And are there any things you're going to be saying to players individually, who, those who you know? I'm sure you're going to be talking to the Ghanaian boys. And since you know some of them, and I'm sure even some of the Sanders players as well. Yeah, very happy obviously for David and Ghana. Um, obviously they beat us last week, but also because I did coach him this year. But um, it's great to also see the South Sudanese community supporting their players there. So well done to them. They've done themselves proud, both teams. Absolutely, both teams have done themselves so proud here. Our 2020 winners of the African Cup New South Wales is Ghana. Ghana Black Star has won it this year. And I'm sure they own the bragging rights to this competition. Well done to Ghana and well done to West Africa. This has been a great day for them. And I'm sure they look forward to next year as well to be defending their title as winners of the African Cup New South Wales. My name is Bernard Freeman. Alongside me is my good friend Alex. And we've been quite happy to bring you this one. And we hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye for now. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. 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 Thank you.